the Fold 4 is finally here. I mean, I got mine several days ago, thankfully, because I pre-ordered it and Samsung sent it early, which, word to the wise, if you ever want to get one of these and get your hands on it early, pre-order it from Samsung. They're usually pretty good about sending it out a few days early. Not always, but this time they were very, very good with that. So, yes, here we have the Fold 4. And the biggest disappointment about this phone is that it could have been better, and it's not. And the reason that it's not is because there's no... There's no natural competition uh, in the United States for this phone. So that's what happens when you have a monopoly, not the, not the little guy with the money bags and the big top hat. What they did with Bill Gates back in the 90s and Microsoft whenever they split them up because they said they had monopoly. Maybe it was the 90s, early 2000s, whatever. They're the only ones in the U.S. that make a phone that launches and you can buy here. So... What happens when you have some guy that sits atop the king of the hill for so long that's uncontested? They get lazy, they get complacent, and there's just not as much innovation. We see this all over the place. That's how it was with the iPhone for years. Some people could say it's still that way. Philosophical debate here. However, when it comes to this phone and you're paying $1,800, there would have been some nice things. Of course, this might be a, just a preference of mine, but I kind of get tired of having to put an S Pen on the outside of the phone. It would be so much nicer if it were on the inside. It would be nice if we had better charging speeds, 25 watts. That's like three or four years ago in most other Android phones, especially if you look at a lot of ones like um, OnePlus and Motorola. And There are so many brands now that are not doing 25 watt charging. Heck, we had the Z Flip 4 with 15 watt charging last year, which was a slap in the face. So with the Z Flip, sorry, so with the Z Fold 4, yeah, it would be nice if they did something like actually made the screen a little bit wider. So this whole three millimeter and then kind of changing the aspect ratio and shaving a little off the bezels, that's cool. But that's something that you get whenever you have a phone company that doesn't have to worry about really making a whole lot of changes to make people happy. And they know they can still continue to charge $1,800. That's just fact of the matter. And also, again, the S Pen, also we're talking about there's no, no S Pen compatibility on the front screen, which makes no sense because this is the fourth generation of the phone. They went out, they, of course, they added the S Pen with the Fold 3, which everybody was happy about. And then with the Fold 3, you're sitting there going, okay, why is there no S Pen compatibility on the front? Surely they'll add it with the Fold 4. That'll be a reason why they'll get people to spend more money next year. And then lo and behold, the Fold 4 comes out. We have the S Pen. It don't work. Then, of course, we don't have even the highest quality cameras. Now, this is one of those things, they have made the camera better. I'm not trying to say the camera's bad. It is a very good camera. It's the 50 megapixel camera. I believe it's identical to the one, the S22. It's a very good camera. Very, very good. But I don't expect very, very good whenever I go out and spend $100,000 and buy a super luxury model car. I expect the best. So when it comes to a $1,800 phone plus tax, you would expect the best, and it's not there. So... Those are just some of the things. These, by no, many, by no stretch of the imagination, is this a bad phone. I like this phone. It's the best Fold they've ever made. It's not really enticing enough, I think, for somebody to upgrade from a Fold 3 to a Fold 4. However, if it's your first foray into the Fold world, it's a very good phone. And I do appreciate the refinements they've made here. I do appreciate having the little bit extra here on the outside on the screen. And it's kind of subtle. And if you're not used to using a Fold 2 or a Fold 3, then, yeah, it's not something you're probably going to pick up on as much. But there is a little bit of a difference. You see a lot of the black area over here around this one, and you don't see all the black area over here. Yeah, not. it's because they shaved down on that, and they really took a chunk out of that left-hand side where there was a bigger bezel. They shaved down the hinge a little bit more. They made the crease slightly less recognizable on the inside. But these are things they should have called this phone the Fold 3S. Because that's exactly what it is. It's a S upgrade. And if you're a iPhone familiar or you're an iPhone user, you know what the S means. It's the old way they used to do the iPhones. You would get a numbered series like the 6 and then the 6S. It would be the exact same chassis, same everything. But they give you a new chip, a couple new processing refinements, some new software updates. And I got to say, one of the biggest updates is giving this Android 12L. It's basically their tablet version of the software, but it really opens this up more and makes it better for multitasking. And you can feel it as you're using it. There's a lot of new things in here. They're really trying to be more thoughtful with what it means to have a big phone and how to use it. So I do appreciate that. I appreciate a lot of things they've done. And this is not a rant video. I, I don't have my lights up right now. By the time you're watching this video, I'm already in Europe going to IFA, 
which is a big tech convention, which is something great. I'm going to go look at new stuff and come back and talk about it and probably shoot a vlog while I'm over there. But this is something just from philosophically me as a tech enthusiast, as a tech reviewer, some of the stuff that you see when you look at a phone, you look at a phone that costs $1,800 and you go, okay, these guys are sandbagging. Uh, there's just not a lot. Of, it's hard to say there's not innovation here because, of course, it's the foldable phone. But this is four years later. We have the Fold 1, the Fold 2, the Fold 3, the Fold 4. And from the Fold 2 to the Fold 4, really, when you look at the actual profile of the phone, when you look at what it does, when you look at the whole design, there's not a whole lot of changes. Like the Fold 3 was kind of like, there was a lot. They really did. And you can't expect that every year. Like you can't expect major changes every year because one, it costs a lot of money. Two, it's very difficult to do that. And then three, when you look at everything we've had with the economy, the supply chain, and all these other issues, it's understandable. Maybe they sandbagged a little bit and they said, okay, we'll do this this year. Maybe next year we'll go back to the drawing board. We'll try and do something more spectacular. But that's another thing. Do we need to come back with our wallet every year for something that's not spectacular? So if you've never owned a Fold, this is great. It's the best version to buy. And unless you don't really care and you want to buy the Fold 3, which is 95% the same phone, and you can get one for a thousand bucks. I saw them going for like less than 900 on Amazon the other day. So that's another appeal that I have. If I were not a tech reviewer, and if I were not buying this so I could cover it for you fine folks that want to watch these videos, I would stick with this one. However, I traded it in and I paid the like $800, $900 in change so that I could get the latest one so I can cover it all year. It's the new one. However, if I, a like discerning consumer, were going out to go buy one and I wanted to spend less money and I wanted to get basically the same experience, I would go buy the Fold 3. I've been using the Fold 3 for a year. It's held up well, solid performance, Snapdragon 888. Yes, it doesn't have exactly as amazing of a camera. Yes, it doesn't have exactly the same dimensions on the outside because of the bezel. I mean, there's very little there. Of course, the battery improvement is better. It's very, very tangible. I've been using this for a couple of days now. My first time killing it 20, like 24 hours, killed 100% of the battery. All right, I get it down to like 10%. I get almost seven hours of screen on time mixed use versus about the four and a half to five that I get with the Fold 3. So there are real tangible savings there. That's a very appreciated upgrade. But overall, that, that's what I wanted to talk about. Because you're going to have some people, when, when you're on, when you're positioned like I am, it, it's hard to look at something. And of course, yes, I, I think it's a good phone. If you want to get it, I recommend it. But you can also see that what Samsung is capable of and how clearly, because nobody is here making them try to compete for your dollars, they're the heir apparent. They're going to get your dollars. Because when you walk into a Best Buy, you walk into a, a AT&T, you walk into a T-Mobile, that's it. It's the only folding, big folding phone. They have the flip and they have the fold. So they're the only ones in the market here. And if you go outside the US, you have the Huawei phone, you have the Oppo phone, you have the Honor. There's several other brands that if you look around and go watch some of their videos are doing some pretty cool, innovative stuff. Whereas these guys right here, it's like, it's, it's the same old, same old with a couple little tweaks and refinements, which is okay. I mean, it doesn't have to reinvent the wheel every time they come out with a new phone. But when you're asking $1,800 plus, I mean, here in Texas where I'm at, 8.25% sales tax. And I'll use the calculator on here real quick. 8.25% sales tax. That's a lot. So let me see here. 1799 times 1 1.0825, $1,947. That's a lot. You're asking a lot of money. And when you can go get a full two for probably like, I don't know, recertified, you can get it pretty cheap. I mean, you you get a Fold 2 pretty good price now, but a Fold 3, I will type this in while I'm here on the video with you, just, just, so, I can, just so I can tell you the right price. So today is the 27th of August, a Fold 3, $843 renewed. That's pretty darn good. Amazon renewed, you get a 90 day warranty with it, unconditional return it. That's $1,000 less. And there is no $1,000 difference in these phones. I would argue there's probably about a two, dollars $300 difference in these phones. So we'll see if they come back and they try to do something more revolutionary, more amazing to try and win our dollars over with the Fold 5 next year. But for now, if you've never had one, if you get a good trade-in deal, if you get an incentive, I'm not saying this is a bad phone. I'm not saying don't go buy this phone. And, and I'm sure the Samsung Knights are already half a, a page into complaining about me saying bad things about this phone. It's not a bad phone. 
it's a great phone. It's the best one they've ever made. But if we don't sit here and say, okay, yes, it's obvious that they could do better and they just aren't because they have no reason to. I mean, come on, really? I, I think you can see, I, I think it's very apparent to see that, that they're really just not pushing the envelope and trying to make this the best they can. They could have probably lowered the price on this, but chose to keep the profit margins higher in an effort to play it safe, which yeah, it's a business decision. 2022 has not been kind to anybody's wallet. There's only so much of that that, okay, we get. I mean, we're in the same position. I mean, I'm paying three and a half dollars for a gallon of milk now. <laughs> There's not a lot of people, I think, going that want to go spend $1,947 on a foldable phone. It's not a year over year upgrade. So if you went from the Fold to the Fold 4, huge upgrade. If you go from the Fold 2 to the Fold 4, I mean, there's some stuff there worth upgrading for, but the Fold 3 to the Fold 4, definitely not worth the extra money. And I can say that as somebody who used the Fold 3 for the entire last year, as somebody who had the Fold 2, as somebody who had the Fold 1, I would not, under normal circumstances, be upgrading from the Fold 3 to the Fold 4. There's not enough there for a, an extra basically grand in the differential because Samsung will give you a $1,000 trade-in for your Fold 3, which is fair. I think that's good, but from one year removed, paying another basically about $900, $800, is, that's a lot, and you're just really not getting a lot for those dollars. So that's all. I'm going to wrap this one up. If you have any questions, comments, want to crucify me in the comment section, then please go there with haste, and I'll see you there. Now, if you did enjoy the video, if you like these type of videos, if you want to see more about the Fold 4, because I'll be covering it all year, please hit the like and the subscribe button and the little notification bell if you want updates when new videos come out. And as always, thanks for being here. I appreciate you watching, and I'll see you guys next time.